Hey guys, this is Dusty with LPL. Sitting here working on the blown small block. And I want to give you guys a quick rundown on mechanical fuel injection. So, stick around and uh, learn something. Alright guys, so this is going to be a fairly quick video. And then, uh, let me blow this out. So I've been... Kind of wrenching on uh, getting the uh, the alcohol small block back in my uh, my gasser Nova here, and um, basically, long story short, I had uh, pulled it out and I put a big block in it with EFI, and uh, motor started making some metal. So for uh, what I thought was a quick solution was just to put put the small block back in it and set it back up for alcohol and so I could do some racing this year while I uh, think about my life decisions and big block chivies. Anyhow, um, so I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown on how mechanical injection works. This is uh, extremely simple. Um, if you can tune a carburetor, you can tune mechanical injection. It's just wrapping your head around some key concepts. So first off, we'll uh, we'll start with the major parts. So the first major part, and it's right in the front of the car, is you gotta have the right fuel tank in the car. So a lot of these, you'll see that there's a tank up front in the nose of the car if it's blown alcohol. And the reason for that is the pump, which is right down there, driven off the camshaft, will not pick up fuel, it, it's not a, it can't suck fuel. So it needs that, that head pressure. And so like in this case, the tank is above the level of the pump and it will suck that tank dry as long as you keep it in that, that notion. The other thing to add about this tank and something that needs to be taken care of on any blown alcohol system is uh, your the entire fuel system is based around returning fuel. And so we return fuel to the tank anytime you want. If you need to take fuel away, you return more fuel. If you need to add fuel to the engine, you return less fuel. But in returning all of this fuel, you basically are doing controlled leaks. <clears throat> Let's see if you can see it. But, uh, yeah, you really can't. Let me try to turn on a light here. So, there is a baffle in that tank that is behind all of these lines that diffuses that fuel and takes the air out of it. And so, this weld here actually holds that baffle in and it deflects and pushes all that fuel to the bottom of the tank. And then there's a diffuser in it that, uh, that I can show you at a, in another video. We'll be building another tank for it anyway. So, um, that's a, that's a huge thing because if you're running this, you got to figure you're returning that, that pump right there is going to make 150 to 160 PSI of fuel pressure. And so you're returning 160 PSI and that's, aerating the crap out of the tank and the motor will not burn air so if you have aerated fuel you're going to fight tune-ups all the time anyway moving on so the fuel tank's very important the the second piece as we move back is obviously the fuel pump so the fuel pump um this is a cam driven unit um, you can run them off of a belt off to the side. That's how I was set up la the last time this thing ran. But I chose to do the cam drive route. It's just a little more reliable and, and cleans up the engine bay a little bit. So we have this pump that's ran off of the camshaft. The, it's a Waterman. Um, you can do ender leads. You can do anything like that. Anyway, um, and then you have a three-way shutoff valve. So, let's see if I can get down here. With this pulled all the way to the rear, 
the pump is returning through this line back to the tank. Basically, the pump is off, engine won't run. With this pushed forward, this passage is blocked and it pushes it here up through that fuel filter, which is right here. So we've got a great big fuel filter here that's coming up. And that brings us to our next major piece, which is the barrel valve. The barrel valve, I'll think about this as the, the barrel valve is, is kind of the brains of the operation. So, um, and aside from the check valves. So the, the barrel valve, when it's shut like this with the hat shut, it is only has uh, idle fuel running through it. Um, someday when I service this barrel valve, I'll show you. There's actually a tongue groove that is metering the amount of fuel coming through the barrel valve. And it looks like a V in there. And that's just your idle fuel. So <clears throat> if, you need, uh, if you need more fuel at idle, you adjust your, uh, your adjuster here. And that will, more fuel would be to open the barrel valve, which moves it down. Less fuel would be to move it up. When we, uh, when we initially set up these tune-ups, and I do it after I do even a pill change, um, basically I drop the lines off, I cap them, and I bleed and I leak down the barrel valve. For blown alcohol, you want to be above 75% leak down. So with all of these capped and only going through the, the hat nozzles, so right here, your leak down percentage at 100 PSI should be at least 75%. This engine here, uh, after messing with it, it likes about 84%. And that's where the, when you crack the throttle, it's, it's uh, very responsive. So we've got the barrel valve. Well, what's all of these check valves? Well, or what are all these brass pieces? These are all check valves. So this, the, the, basically behind this plug, this is your main pill. And so this is gonna return the bulk of the fuel back to the fuel tank that you wanna take away. This is your main tuning apparatus is behind this. And it's basically just a jet. Then we have an idle check valve. Like I told you, the fuel pump right down there It'll make about 160 PSI at um, 8,000 RPM engine speed. Um, now it's ran off the cam gear, so it's only 4,000 RPM pump speed. It's, uh, it's half of engine speed. So basically fuel's coming up. It's, it's the fuel that you're allowing through the barrel valve is only going to the hat when it's at idle. And that's through these, there's four more on the other side. There's eight hat injectors. So everything's going through the blower at idle. Well, then this is like a, this is like a five PSI check is what I believe that is. So any excess fuel that can't go through that, that groove is being directed out of the idle check back to the tank. Okay, now what's this check? Well, this is called a pump saver check. And so when we open this up, you know, throttle blades are all the way open. Barrel valve is all the way open. We make a pass and we blow through the traps and we shut the car down 8,000 RPM. Snap the throttle shut, pull the fuel, kill the ignition, dump the laundry, pass is over with, get on the return road. What this is doing this is a this this is as this one's actually set at 150 psi, but most of the time you want 160 um, because it'll this particular pump won't won't make that pressure and it won't it won't unload. So basically 150 psi. This check opens and dumps it right back to the tank. So we're wide open. This check valve. Now, well, let me back up. So if we take out this, this line, we said that this wasn't here. So now we're putting all the fuel through the blower. And that, that goes through 
like again, these eight hat injectors. So this is a really common setup to just run hat injectors. Um, your tuning, tunability on a hat injector, uh, hat only injector, excuse me, is that you get the fuel right, but basically you have to tune to your leanest cylinder. Um, your leanest cylinder is what's going to dictate whether or not you're going to burn the piston up. So um, there's not a whole lot of tunability. We can change out just the just the nozzles, which look like. Just look like this. These are all different hat nozzles. And these are basically your jets. So let's say the back half of the motor is lean. We can actually change each. We can change these nozzles, one on each side or two on each side, and size them up a little bit to give more fuel to the rear of the engine. So there is some tunability there. But the majority of your tunability is all in this behind this plug, which is your main pill. Okay, so we've 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 covered how this works with just a hat. Well, now if we add in this secondary outlet, now we've got another set of lines that's coming up here to another check valve, and then we have lines that are coming out of that block, and those go to each cylinder individually. So now, with, with just this, I can tune the fuel system to each cylinder. This check back here is a 15 PSI. So, at idle, the pump's making, you know, 6 or 8 PSI. And so, and that's a, like 1,200 RPM engine speed. 6 or 8 PSI, we're only idling through fuel in the hat. The second you rack the throttle, this 15 PSI check is going to open because the pump speed came up, which means pressure came up. And now we start distributing fuel to each cylinder. And that's, that's through these hoses. And there is another set of port injectors right down there. I, I don't know if you can see them in the video. Anyway, they go into the intake ports right above the cylinder heads. So now, when you add port injectors, you can tune each cylinder individually. So it's not that this, that the hat fuel shuts off either when this opens. You're flowing through both. So you still have a percentage of fuel coming through the injector hat to help cool the rotors and the blower. And then when this opens, now we're directing a you know, more fuel into the cylinders to get that fine tune. I hope this is all making sense. So then you noticed I covered up this check valve a little bit ago. Well, it's actually out of the system right now. This is called a high speed. So this is a, this is a very important tool that we have in the system that I'm not going to use right at first when I first get this out on the track because we did I did change some some stuff in the engine so I need to work on a new base tune-up but basically this high speed relief when the pump is when you're when you're making your pass and this thing's wide open and let's say we're uh we're at, we're shifting this car at 8200 rpm well now the pump is actually making too much fuel up at that high rpm and so we want another another return apparatus that's going to send it right back to this port at the tank. So at high RPM, this is going to open. And this is like a 135 PSI check or 140 PSI check. And it's got another pill in it, too, that's up here on the top, just like here. So I can change these pills and meter how much fuel I take away on the top end and... So, so basically, the, a blower motor will lay down on the top if you've got too much fuel in it. You need to start leaning it out. Um, it's not that we want to take away uh, more fuel than it had in the lower RPM. 
I said we want to take away fuel from the pump because it's making too much fuel to, uh, you know, up at the higher RPM. And, and basically we start to fatten up. Um, so we have this, this lean out that directs fuel back to the tank and, uh, you know, takes that fuel, that excess fuel away. So one other thing I'll add is that I, that I highly recommend <clears throat> and something to, to, uh, to think about is if you're doing a mechanical injected blown alcohol or, or just injected, uh, with a hat, um, on methanol, we, uh, really highly recommend the use of EGT, of an EGT system. So it's exhaust gas temperature. And so, <clears throat> you know, there's O2 sensor systems out there that, well, you know, wideband systems that are set up just for methanol. Those work okay too. In fact, I even have one in the car. But um, a very big tuning variable, and that's why there's there's one in each cylinder for those EGT probes, because I'm going to tune this off of exhaust gas temperature. So I'll bring the motor up to temp, and here in the shop, I will stand this thing against the trans brake and get some data with with the hat all the way open. And I can get some data and get my tune-up close. Um, again, <clears throat> because we have a mechanical pump driven off the motor, it, uh, if we looked at it on a graph, that, that flow rate would be a constant flow. And so our fuel is in direct proportion to RPM. And that's how this works. Anyway, that's enough of that. I've uh, I've talked my voice away, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.